Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking once again about that tropical storm Claudette, and it actually could become a tropical storm again, as it is currently at tropical depression status. <laughs> Anyways, for today's comment of the day, I want to know how long do you think we have until our next tropical system develops in the Atlantic? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now, first things first, we're taking a look at that low pressure location, and as you can see, it's in the middle of Alabama, so this one is very far inland. Throughout the day today, it is going to make its way in through Georgia and then potentially the Carolinas and a little bit of Tennessee as well before moving offshore. So that's the track this one will eventually take. Let's take a look at its satellite imagery too, and as you can see, there is definitely some spin to it, but it has taken a hit from land, really. I mean, we can see the white clouds, which are the very, uh, not very tall ones. You could tell that they're, they have a nice spin to them, but those tall ones, the red ones, are, are struggling quite a bit uh, over land, and that is to be expected. The low pressure is expected to actually cross a lot further south than we expected. It's going to go to Georgia and then become, well, it's going to stay a tropical depression, and then... By the time it's reaching around the South Carolina and North Carolina border, it should be becoming a tropical storm, and that's going to be by about 1 a.m. on Monday. Very interesting to see uh, it expected to become a tropical storm or basically be intensifying over land. That's not super common. Usually you have to wait until it reaches over water. So I'm going to be very curious, actually, to see if this does occur this way because that is kind of rare, in my opinion, from what I've seen in the past. Now, probability of tropical depression here, as you can see, it's still obviously at a 90 to 100% chance in the areas where it's going to cross over because it is at least a tropical depression right now. Now, the interesting thing is you saw that the National Hurricane Center definitely expects this one to become a tropical storm. The European model here from probability of tropical storm is only at about a 70 to 80% chance, which is a lot, but, you know, given how confident that the National Hurricane Center is, it is a little bit... Uh, surprising actually to see it come in that low in the percentages there from the European model. Here's our GFS Ensemble model spaghetti model guidance and as you can see uncooked noodles they're all going in the same direction they basically are extremely confident where this one's going and when we compare that to the European Ensemble models model guidance uh, you can see it's almost identical Canadian model almost identical and then even when we look at the individual models it's nearly identical very, very awesome to see the agreement here from the models. You love to see it because you know your accuracy is going to be on point. And the models, you know, you're very confident in them when they're showing all the same thing. When you get all these different computers and they all come out with the same exact result, that's a very good sign that they are on to something. Because, it's, you know, we're taking, we just probably looked at about, you know, when you count each individual member and everything, we probably just took a look at over a hundred different models and they're all showing something within 50 miles of each other or so. So yes, very, very confident at this point. What we're going to do is we're going to move on, take a look at the model intensity guidance, and then we're going to start talking about impacts. Now here is the model intensity guidance. And as you can see, we're below tropical storm status. As of right now, every single one of these models by about hour 60 have this one either right on the edge of being a tropical storm or well above tropical storm status. Uh, so we are, but we're expecting that to happen much earlier, possibly within the next 12 to 24 hours. This one could become a tropical storm again, and certainly by the time we're reaching hours 36 through 48, we're even more overwhelmingly confident, uh, and that's going to be by the time it's basically entering into the Atlantic by that point. And you can see it drops off a little bit. But it is hovering right around that tropical storm status line. So there is that possibility that it does stay a tropical storm for quite a while over the Atlantic as it's heading northward, potentially towards the Atlantic coast of Canada. We're going to be watching for you guys as well, obviously, with this system, uh, because there is that chance, again, that it just heads straight up the coast. And actually, the National Hurricane Center is more on board with that kind of hugging the coast type outlook. Uh, we've been kind of tracking that potential as well. Now here's this tropical storm force wind speed probabilities, and as you can see, uh, if you're anywhere in the greens, you're at a 5 to 30% chance, and if you're in those yellow slash orange shades, you're at about a 30 to 50% chance of tropical storm force winds. So, you know, you're, we are taking a look at a good chance of tropical storm force winds, but the National Hurricane Center isn't coming out and saying, like, there's, you know, a 70 or 80% chance anywhere. They're not coming out with anything that sounds that way whatsoever yet, from what I've seen at all. Now here is our most likely arrival time of tropical storm force winds. Sunday at 8 p.m. for South Carolina. Monday at 2 a.m. for Central and, and South, the South Coast of North Carolina, basically. 
and then 8 a.m. there for Southeast Virginia, Northeast North Carolina, uh, and then Monday 8 p.m. it will be over the ocean. For Nova Scotia, it'll be sometime Tuesday morning, and then for the northern regions of Nova Scotia there, it'll be sometime around Tuesday 8 p.m. Very interesting. I hope that helps having the timing of the arrival time of the, you know, the worst of the winds, basically. Here's the uh, peak storm surge forecast. Very interesting. We are expecting potential storm surge here. One to two feet there for Little River Inlet up all the way to Cape uh, Lookout. Then we have from the North Carolina-Virginia border down through Cape Lookout, we have one to three feet storm surge expected. So this is, you know, obviously pretty concerning and it's enough to do some damage. It's obviously not 10 feet of storm surge, but it is enough to be a little bit concerning for sure. What we're going to do here in a moment is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at the rest of the impacts from the model guidance. All right, now here is our vorticity, and this shows us just some atmospheric rotation going on. And as you can see, by the time we're reaching about 10 a.m. or so this morning, it will be over Georgia. By the time we are reaching about... 2 a.m. That's going to be somewhere between North Carolina and South Carolina. You could see all that energy transfers over to basically mostly just the, the Carolinas in general. Uh, and then that will move off offshore of North Carolina and Virginia there at about Monday at about maybe 1 p.m. or so. Uh, winds will be quite strong along the coast by this hour, I do expect. Now, the interesting thing is the precipitation won't exactly match up with the vorticity because we do see that a lot of that energy is up near the Delmarva, Virginia, things like that. But by the time we take a look at the actual precipitation, uh, we can see there isn't much expected for Virginia northward. If you're anywhere in the greens, we're expecting 0.1 to 0.5 inches of rainfall. If you're anywhere in the blues, it's about half an inch to an inch of rainfall. If you're anywhere in the yellows or reds, you're at about an inch to, to five inches of rain. And as you can see, that is the maximum we expect at this point from the rest of this storm. We don't expect any of those, you know, 5 to 10 inch amounts any longer because we're obviously in a different phase of this storm's life. But yeah, it's good to see that the impacts are coming in a little bit less significant by this point, just given the fact that we're later into this storm. We're at a whole different uh, section of this storm. When it came from the Gulf and hit the Gulf Coast, I think it was just in a warmer climate, and I think that's why there was more rainfall involved, more storms involved, uh, and more tornado threats involved. But this phase of the game, it's going to become more like a nor'easter. Although it will be tropical, it will be a lot more like a nor'easter, where there will be some steady rainfall for some regions, but specifically the wind is, is a big worry as well. Uh, just a nasty storm. Uh, it's going to be a whole different type of storm. Although, again, they're both going to be considered to be tropical at both phases of the storm. It's just a little bit different. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at the accumulated maximum wind gusts and take a look at that. Like I said, the wind is gonna be pretty bad. Now, if you're anywhere in the blues, you're 18 to 34 mile per hour wind gusts as the maximum. If you're anywhere in the greens, you're at about 34 to 50 mile per hour wind gusts. And if you're anywhere in those oranges, you're at about 50 uh, to let's call it 70 mile per hour wind gusts. So we have a very significant amount of wind gusts expected here for the southeast potentially. Uh, so we're going to be watching very, very closely, obviously, for these wind driven impacts with this tropical storm that will feel more, more like a uh, nor'easter, like I said before. We'll be watching for this one closely. Now, for today's confidence tab, we are at a six out of six again. Our confidence is basically at the maximum at this point because the storm is already underway. The spaghetti models look nearly perfect. I mean, you can't expect any better from the spaghetti models. Everything seems to be coming together to where everybody's on board with what should occur with this upcoming, well, and ongoing storm. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you think this one will regain tropical storm status? And Little Will Willow said, I believe it will barely regain tropical storm strength once it enters the Atlantic. It might happen a little bit earlier than that, but overall, that's a good comment of the day uh, because at this point, it is expected to regain that status. So you're basically right. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Little the Pan, and Donna Carnes. Alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Gugalessa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flago, Gary, Sean Colisi, Dwight Phelan, and Stephen Crenenthal. If you would like to be a part of this patronized screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description 
and in the pinned comments down below. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Hairforms1 and Catbite as well. You can find that one next to the subscribe button. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button. Be sure to leave a comment down below to help that YouTube algorithm out. And be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.